Hi, it's Mike from Party of Four Crafts again. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to use Illustrator to make a multi-process Glowforge or any other laser file that will engrave, cut, and score all at the same time. So I'm going to do that by showing you how to make a, a cool outline with a name in it, keychain of this gecko here. So the first step is to pick your photo. I picked a gecko and this is in PNG format. You could tell because when I click on it with the node editing arrow, it doesn't surround itself with nodes. So first thing I have to do is convert it to vector by going to path and trace bitmap. A black and white object like this works great with just the built-in settings, brightness cutoff set at 0 0.450, click OK, and you're ready to go. It didn't convert that bitmap to a vector. It made a vector of that bitmap, and now there's two of them there, and one is a vector and one is not. So I have to delete the not a vector one because if you leave them on top of each other, the Glowforge doesn't know how to handle that. It will just ignore both of them and not do anything at all. So I just delete that one, move this one back over here. Now I have a vector version of that bitmap image. One thing we should talk about next is the difference between engrave, score, and cut. Engrave means it goes back and forth like coloring in the object as it burns it into the wood or acrylic or whatever you're using. Cut is when it does a thin line that goes all the way through the wood and cuts it out. And score is like a cut. It's a single thin line, but it doesn't go all the way through. In the Glowforge, each one of those has to be a different color and engraves have to be filled with a color where scores and cuts have to be outlined with a color. On the Glowforge, it doesn't matter what color you use, but if you're selling your files, it does matter on other lasers. And since you're not just selling to Glowforge people, you should pay attention to this part to make lots of people happy. For example, I have a no-name Chinese K40 laser, and on that laser, cuts must be red, scores must be blue, and engraves must be black. Whereas in the Glowforge, they just have to be any three different colors. So if you make them red, blue, and black, it will work on any laser. And that's what you really want to make customers happy. In this case, I'm going to be engraving the gecko so I can leave it black. But if I was going to change it to an outline, all I have to do is down in the left corner, click on the X and it turns the fill color off. And then I would shift click on a color and now it gives it an outline. That outline is not very thick, so I can go into the fill and stroke where I could have changed the fill, the stroke color, and the stroke thickness as well. But as far as just changing the colors, I always do them down here. If I just click this arrow up a couple times, it makes that stroke a little thicker, just so it's easier to see. It has absolutely no effect on what your laser does. Your laser goes straight through the center of that line. It doesn't matter how thick it is, but making it thicker will make it easier to see. And that, that's a good thing for you. And when somebody buys the file from you and they open it up, they'll be able to see it easily and not have to zoom way in and change the thickness themselves. So if I was going to cut it, this would be ready to cut, but this I'm not, I'm going to engrave it. So I go back and give it a black fill and I shift click the X to give it no outline. Now I want to cut an outline of this around the gecko. So I'm going to make a duplicate copy of it, make it bigger and just an outline. So to do that, first thing I do is duplicate it by going control D. Now there are two of them. And they're both vectors, not like last time where one was a vector and one was a bitmap. But I want them to be right on top of each other, so I'm going to undo that. There's still two there, you just can't tell because they're right on top of each other. And now for the top one, I go Path and Dynamic Offset. Now there's this little white diamond here, and if I grab that diamond and stretch it, it gets bigger. But I can't see through it to tell when it's big enough, so I'm going to turn off the fill and turn on an outline color so I can see how big it is. That's pretty good right there. Sometimes it does weird little mistakes when you do an offset like this. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. But in order to fix it, I can't have it in offset mode like this. I have to convert it back to a path. So I go path, object to path, 
and now it's back to a path again. And it's a good thing because there's some stray nodes there, stray nodes there, stray nodes there, and this is all messed up here. So if I zoom in a bit, I can delete all of these stray nodes. That one is a stray node, that one, and these would really cause a problem if you put it like this into your laser cutter. It would come in and try to cut that part and it would mess up your entire keychain. So I'll just go through and get rid of all of those. If I zoom in on this messed up part, it just, it was this little bump. It didn't know how to handle that. The bump is still there, but the outline. So we don't need much of that. So I'm just gonna delete most of it, except that corner node. And that will be good enough right there. Uh, it still has this one causing some problems. So now I'm happy with that. I would go through and there's still some like double stacked nodes around here and I would make sure that they're double stacked, not one is loose and just really close to on top of the other one, but it looks like it's fine. So I'm going to leave it like that. So the red is going to be cut on any Chinese laser on the Glowforge, it's fine too. Black is engraved. So I'm going to score this name, Brian, in an outline and then union the two together so it's one big keychain. In order to do that, I'm going to repeat the process that I just did up there. I'm going to convert this text to a path, duplicate it with Control D. Now the one difference between this, a single object, I could just go up and go path, dynamic offset, but I, it didn't work for me this time because you can't select multiple things and do an offset unless you union them first. So I'm holding down shift click while I click on each of these and I'll go path union. And now when I go path dynamic offset, it does work and there's my white diamond. So I'm going to turn off the fill, give it an outline color and now stretch it out and make it bigger. That's pretty good. You can see some stray stuff in there that I'm going to have to deal with. So I go path object to path. I see some stray nodes here and here that, that didn't show up before, but now that I converted it to a path, you can see it. I'm worried about this one, so I'll delete it and see if anything weird happens. It looks like it stayed okay. And this one, and that one, and those. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just using the node editing arrow, and I just highlight, and you can delete whatever you, you highlight that way. Now this version of the name is, I just want it scored. I just want the outline of it, thin line of the outline engraved onto this keychain. So to do that, all I have to do is turn off the fill color and turn on an outline color, which in the case of all of the Chinese lasers is blue. For the Glowforge, it doesn't matter as long as it's not the same color as the cut or the engrave, and sometimes even then, it still figures out what you're trying to do and it separates them even if they're the same color. So that's ready to go. Now I just need to join these parts together. So I'm going to drag them until they overlap a bit. I always do these in advance before I start, and when these parts touched, it didn't look very good. So I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't touch there. Maybe I'll put it there. And now I want to just click the red outline here, the red outline here, shift click um, both of those, and then go path and union, and now they're combined. I don't know if I like this part in the Y, so I could go in and click here, and it highlights that, and I could delete that too. We'll see, I think that's a judgment call. If, if you like it, keep it. I didn't like it very much, so I just took it out. Now the, the last thing is to put up here the, the hole for the keychain to go through. So I click on the circle tool, hold down control while I drag it out to make a perfect circle. And then I control D to duplicate it and go path, dynamic offset, make a smaller version of that. It's right there in the center. Highlight those and drag them over where I want them, right about there. Use the node editing arrow to select the outside one and this red outline path union. 
You don't have to do this next step, but I do just to be safe. I want to cut this hole out of this red outline, not just have a, a hole inside of another outline. So I click, shift click, and go path, exclusion, and now it's part of this. When I click on it, it selects that too. So there it is, there's my keychain. It's blue for score, red for cut, and black for engrave. Now to load this into the Glowforge app, I click create, upload from file. I saved it on the desktop and it was called Brian. If you made any mistakes, like you forgot to convert your text to path, an error message will come up down here. So watch those carefully. If you used any kind of clip mask, which Glowforge can't handle, then that'll pop up there as well. And when your design doesn't come out like you expected, you'll know why, because you watch those error messages. But before I can change these settings, I have to choose a material. This is just an imaginary file, so it doesn't matter. And it got everything right, except it wants to cut Brian out. And that's not what I want. I want to score Brian. So if I want to change any of the engraved settings, if I want this to go faster, I can click draft graphic. If I don't want it to go so deep, I can drop the power down so I can change all those settings. And then I can change this one to score just by clicking that. And this one is already set to cut and it's good to go. So I would, my, my Glowforge is offline. It's quarantined at work right now, but if it was online, I would set focus on my material click print, press the magic button, and it would be ready to go. All right, that's it. So now you know how to do multi-process, cut, score, engrave, all-in-one files in Inkscape on the Glowforge or any other laser for that matter. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like to see when new videos come out, just click the subscribe button. And in the comments, let me know if there are any other topics that you would like to see. Thanks.